Okay, you guys, this is the last episode to this house meeting. I have had so much fun watching it. You'll notice that the entire room begins to get engaged during this episode, and so there are some scenes that are difficult to see, but I want you to really allow yourself to capture the energy of the spirit in the room as everybody was getting excited, was watching what was going on. The worship of the students was amazing. Is that the oh. spirit was moving outside of our boxes. So make sure you watch all the way to the end. Don't forget to click like and leave me a comment. Here we go. Oh, and I almost forgot there's a beautiful deliverance that's captured at the end as well. So again, hang in there. Letitia. Father, I thank you for Letitia. Go ahead and close your eyes. Don't want you to pretend like nobody else is here. This is your moment just between you and the Lord. Just let him see you. <laughs> let him see you completely. You know, you've been in a season, you've been in times in your life where you've tried to hide from the presence of the Lord. Just like Adam and Eve, they tried to build, build for themselves garments that were too small. They couldn't cover their nakedness and their shame. And God says, there's nothing you have done that I have not covered by my blood. And so tonight I feel the Lord just wants to come upon you with his grace and his forgiveness. It's just his grace and his forgiveness. And I hear him say, tell my sister that she is worthy of my love. There it is. Thank you, Lord. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Thank you, Jesus. There's a lot of teenagers over there. They need to go. I know they're going. Oh, please. You, you know what? Please. I'll, please. I'll do what the Father tells me to do. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. You can't argue with that, can you? Mm -hmm. No. So there was a time, I think maybe it was a year and a half, two years ago, maybe it was the very first time I ever prayed over you and I ever met you. And there was a real resistance that you had to really just surrender yourself to the Lord. But God has brought you out of that. He has brought you out of that fear and he's taught you the beauty and the freedom in just totally surrendering. He set you free from so many anxieties that would keep you up at night. And while we know we are on process with the Lord and we have not yet been made perfect, when we take a look at the progress and we take a look at how much God has done, it's supernatural. I see it. God sees it. Your children see it. So I can close your eyes. And we just allow the Spirit to just come upon you. And we allow Him to just love on you. And we just allow Him to just remind you that just as He has begun. See, it was that day at that church. I didn't start that. And you didn't start that. The Spirit started that. And you walked away feeling a sense of regret that you didn't let the Spirit have His way with you. But you've learned, like, I'm not going to miss that anymore. I'm not going to miss out on the love of God. I'm not going to miss out on the supernatural move of God. But everything He has, I want it. And so, God, we release the more of the kingdom into her right now in Jesus' name. There it is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'll come to you. Oh, actually, you step forward. I want to keep you up here. You're a nice barometer for me. We got room for you. We got room for you. How are you feeling physically? Still, ooh, 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 all right, okay, okay, yeah. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord. Um, so much of life is us not knowing what the answer is, but rather knowing who the answer is. And so, God, I thank you, Father, that in the midst of us not knowing what the answers are, that there's a who that we can stand on, and there's a person that we believe in. And so, God, I thank you that you're setting her free from not needing to know what, from not being able to have it all defined, from not being able to pinpoint all the things in the Spirit. But there's a freedom that you're coming into. Oh, and I don't need to know all of this. I just want to surrender more to the Spirit. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, that greater freedom is rushing into her mind. Greater freedom is rushing into her physical body. There it is. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Get her, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Freedom. Freedom. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Lord. But if you go down, don't take me with you. Oh, I'm teasing you. Just hands up just like this. It's just a matter of resting and just receiving his presence. It's about letting him have his way with you. See, there can be people who haven't been trustworthy in their life. 
but the Father says that I've always been trustworthy. I've never left you. I've never forsaken you. And if you would let me tonight just love you in deeper portions, I want to heal all the fears in your life. I want to heal all the anxieties in your life. I take authority even over spirits of panic that have caused you to panic in your life. I take authority over them in the name of Jesus. And I release the peace and the rest of the kingdom. The peace and the rest of the kingdom. And the Bible says his perfect love casts out all fear. And I just want to speak over you that no man will ever love you perfectly. Your mama will never love you perfectly. No friend will ever love you perfectly. You will never even be able to love yourself perfectly. But God, he loves you perfectly. Not because of anything you've done but because of what he did for you on the cross. There it is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for the faith of a child. We thank you, Father, for greater messages in the Spirit, greater revelation of his word, the ability to interpret the word for a specific person for a specific time. I just pray even as greater understanding of the prophetic being loosed over you in the name of Jesus, that even when you don't know it, God's going to be speaking through you prophetically. Things that you read in your yesterday, God's going to bring up in your today because it's a now word for that person for just a time as this. And so, God, I thank you, Father, for the loosing of that prophetic anointing right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Yes. I'll come to you. Step forward just for a moment. Take a step forward for me. <clears throat> Put your hands up just like this and nice and relaxed. Go ahead and close your eyes. Nobody's here except for you and the Holy Spirit. Nobody but you and God. Just give it a minute. Let it manifest. Let him begin to show himself to you and show you the depths of the love that he has for you. That's just the spirit coming on you. Now, Father, I thank you that even now, God, you're casting darkness off of her mind. You're casting depression out of her heart. God, and you're loosing the fullness of the illumination of the kingdom, the hope of the kingdom, the plans and the purpose and the prosperity that he has in mind for you. I take authority over the anchor that has held you back and kept you from running as fast as you know that you can run. There's been a knowing in your knower that you know that you are meant for more than this. And God says, you're right, you are meant for the, more than this. And I have called you for such a time as this, into this season, into this time, and I am replacing the legs that have been stuck with legs that can run with the Spirit. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the, that's just the Spirit coming on you. We thank you for the swiftness of the Spirit being loosed right now in the name of Jesus, in the form of his love from the top of your head all the way down to the tips of his toes. There you go. That's just the spirit. She's got you. You do it, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your husband. Are you guys together? Yes. Is he your husband? Yes. You had to go first. He was like, you go first. Oh, no. He just, I didn't think he was here. I <laughs> Come on, let's go. He's like, I can't leave here and not and not give me a piece of this. Go ahead and close your eyes, and I want you to pretend like nobody else is in this room except for you and the Holy Spirit. Me, I'm standing here, but the presence of the Lord is all that matters right now. Just the opportunity to step into the Holy of Holies. The Bible talks about when Jesus died, that there was a tearing of the veil from the top to the bottom, a supernatural thing that ushered, opened the door that anybody could enter into the presence of the Lord anytime they wanted to. And there's been an alluring in your presence, for in, your, in your soul for a while where you feel like, I know that there's greater intimacy in mind for me. I feel like this is, this is boring. Like, I don't want, there's got to be more to life than just this. And the Father tonight is saying, I'm going to tear the veil from the top to the bottom, and I'm ushering you into my presence. I'm ushering you into the depths of my love. That's just the Spirit coming on you. Just an invitation for you to come into the deeper portions. I'm going to reveal to you deeper truths. I'm going to reveal to you your greater portions. I want to reveal to you your greater possibilities and potential in the spirit. See, the things that you have done, the things that you have accomplished, don't even begin to scratch the surface of all that God wants to do in you and through you. I hear the Father say that you have the anointing of a lion. And so far, your life and all of your knowledge and all of your religion and all the things that you have been taught have been a cage that have kept you tamed. But tonight, God wants to, un just like the tearing of the veil that ushered, ushers us into the Holy of Holies, 
Tonight, God is opening the door to that cage, and he's ushering you into the wildness of the spirit. He's letting you loose. He's unlocking the cage. And this is an invitation that the Lord is bringing to you. And so, Father, I thank you. There it is. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Are you guys learning? Because we want you to learn. Don't walk out of here and think you're never going to do this. What's the use of it if you're not going to use it? You're not going to pray healing in your hands if you don't plan to land hands on anybody. That's right. Here we go. Nice and easy. Father, I thank you for my sister Hope. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for all the work you've done in my life, or in her life, and the things you've done through her for us, and the way that she has blessed people all along the path. And there's an old poem that talks about how when you walk along the path and how you have this cracked pot and how it was leaking water, and by the time the little girl got to where she was going, that all the water was go was gone. But what she didn't realize is that she was actually watering flowers along the way. And the enemy has told you that. Your past is filled with cracked pots. But God is saying that those cracked pots have actually released nourishment, have released water, and flowers have been planted in every season of your life. Every place you have gone has not been for naught. But if you were to look back, if you were to allow the Spirit to give you a gander into the past, the deepest valleys, come on, in the natural the valleys are where the flowers bloom. The natural, the valley is where the water rushes. And the enemy has told you that your valleys are dry. But God says, if you look with a spiritual eye, you'll see that it's in the valleys that I have brought forth the most fruit, that I have bloomed the most flowers, that I have rushed the most water. The presence of my love has filled those valleys and I have used you even in the seasons that you felt like you were unusable. I take authority over the enemy that would tell you that you've not been usable, you're not usable, and you're never going to be usable. Those are lies straight from the pit of hell. And we pull those off of you and we replace them with, God, I thank you that you have used me. I see it, God. I see it the way you see it. I see the fruit that's in my past. I see the fruit that's in my present. I even see the fruit that's in my future. And I thank you, Father, that it's not one flower here and it's not one flower. You understand that sometimes the most beautiful and most flower-filled fields are wild fields. And the enemy wants you to feel like because your garden has been unkept, that there must not be any flowers, there must not be any fruit, and that's simply not true. And so, Father, we thank you that even in the wildest, most unkept seasons of your life, the valleys of your life, that flowers are prevalent, that they are abundant, that they are growing, and they are fruitful. And so, Father, I thank you for my sister, Hope, and I pray, Holy Spirit, for these truths to just be confirmed by your Spirit right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. How you doing? She's still got the Shakers and the Quakers. Listen, this has happened to me before, and I shook for days. It started to panic me. I was like, what is this? All? Is it? And Lord was like, it's just a part of you now. Just like this. Father, I thank you for Angela. I thank you, Father, for the authority that you have given to her to walk in. I thank you, Father, that there's a difference in the Bible about the dunamis power and the exousia power, right? The dunamis power is the power, and the exousia power is the authority to practice the power. In your life, you've had an understanding of this dunamis power, but more recently in the season that you're in, God is making you familiar with the exousia power. What? I don't just have power, but I have authority to practice the power. It's like what I was speaking earlier, that I am moved by the Spirit, but if not, I move the Holy Spirit. And God is bringing an understanding to you. For such a time as this, you're coming into a new season that God is saying, I trust you with my power. I trust you. Let's go ahead and close your eyes. And so, Father, we thank you, Father, that you have been trusted. The Bible says um, that because you have been faithful in the small things, he will give you charge over big things. He will give you charge over 10 cities, 100 cities, 1,000 cities. And so, Father, I thank you that tonight that you are promoting her in the spirit, that you're promoting her into greater authority. You're promoting her, God, into a greater move in the spirit. And I ask, Holy Spirit, even now that you would affirm the word, God, even with your presence, 
that you would affirm the word with your love. And God, that you would give her a fresh infilling of not just the power, but the resonating authority of the Spirit that she would have a newfound understanding of the ability to speak to something and it moves. That she would have a newfound ability to, be a, to lay her hand on something and it would be healed. That she has a newfound ability that she can just look at something and it will shift because of her gaze. And so God, I thank you that there's a new understanding on the west side of the Jordan for you, ma'am, of what it looks like to really operate in the authority of the kingdom. And so, God, I thank you that tonight you're doing this new thing. Release it, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How you doing? You all right? You're good. You're good now. You shook it off? Oh, okay. I got to sober up. How about you? How are you doing? <laughs> Still shaking? How you doing? Hi. <laughs> She's so low under it. Good, 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 Lord. You do it, God. How are you doing? I already know. I already know. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. How are you doing? You doing good. I love when people are like, you guys remember when we were in Cincinnati the last time, and I was so high in the spirit, literally. This girl came after me, up to me after a after house meeting, and I think the entire conversation, oh, you weren't there. Swing. Thanks. Yeah. Do you remember? I was like this. I must have looked like it. I was like this. <laughs> oh, I was like. The, I was like I was trying to hold myself up. You were there, and this girl she just kept talking to me, and I was like, I have no idea. She was like Charlie Brown's teacher, because I was so not there. I was like, I feel really bad because I feel like she was like, and the, she was telling me about, it, and I was like, I. And as soon as she walked, I was like, I got to go to the van. <laughs> I, can't, I can't any longer. That was when I heard the wind chimes. I was so, woohoo, goners. How many of you guys follow my YouTube channel? Not everybody? Chloe. Really? Follow your TikTok? Oh, how many people follow my TikTok? You're on my For You page on every day. Listen, there's lots of there's lots of fun stuff like this stuff on my on my YouTube, but there's lots of really good teachings. There's teaching on the Holy Spirit, the works of the Holy Spirit. I go into great depth what the Bible says about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Do your homework. Let the Holy Spirit reveal further truths for you. Study the word for yourself. Be a be a student of the word. If you don't know how to get into it and set it yourself, go to go to my YouTube, get have a piece of paper. Everything that I speak, write it down, push, pause, look it up. Don't let me teach you. Let the Word teach you. Let the Holy Spirit navigate you into truth. How you doing? You're like rolling around in the wallowing in the fields. Just wallowing in her wild fields. That's okay. You're good. You just let it marinate. You just let it saturate there for a minute. I love when people like rotisserie in the, like I'm just rotisserie chicken in the spirit. You is this your sister? Wait, are you guys related? That's your little sister? Is she taller than you? It's been that way for a while. Hands out just like this. All right. I'm going to pull everybody into the center circle one more time. Sorry, guys. It's so it's super important that we just kind of stay engaged. Hi, Kelsey. Super important that we stay engaged because what the enemy likes to do is kind of distract and disturb. So that's why I kind of just keep centering people. And you don't realize that your faith is actually raising the move in the room. So I need you. I can't move the Holy Spirit by my. I mean, I can. <laughs> He's a <spirit. laughs> But it's easier if everybody's faith is engaged, right? And you get to be a participant in her prayer. Right? You don't get to just be a spectator. You get to be a participant. These two are fighting. They're trying to decide if they're going to go right or left with That's their heads. No. Because when they catch people together, usually they're like, bam, watch it. <laughs> and they headbutt a lot. So they're trying to decide, are you going right or left? You're right or my left. You said my right. And then they'll start fighting in the spirit. Here we go. <laughs> Hand up just like this. It's all the two. They're already, are you good? Okay. I want to make sure that they're good. Close your eyes for me. Have you ever experienced this before? Well, you, like, you like have gotten indoctrinated big. You went through. You've seen deliverance. You've seen. You, she's like, no, I'm not doing that. No, no. She's like, look at. She's no, like, no. I've seen it. I've tap, seen it tap, before. Tap, tap. Oh, you've seen me I before. Never, no, no, no. I've seen like deliverance before, but I never seen like in person. And it's crazy because I was just asking her about it, and she didn't know. Like, you know. No, okay. <laughs> no I know. Here we go. I didn't know either until I was crawling up the back of a chair, and I was like, what's happening? Why? What is happening? Here we go. 
Father, I thank you for my sister. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence that is with her. I thank you, Lord, that all the days of her life you have known her. And the Bible says these the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there were times when you were a child, when you were laying in your bed, that you had the most intimate um, encounters with the Holy Spirit. And when you were just a child, and even though your childlike faith believed that it was God, as you got older, you kind of um, reasoned those experiences away. But I hear, look, at nobody else has gotten this word tonight. Not one person have I said that you had encounters with the Holy Spirit when you were a child in your bed. Only you. Because God is saying tonight, he wants you to know that it wasn't your imagination. That it was the Holy Spirit. That even there, he was speaking your name. Even there, he knew you. And even there, he was stirring up your kingdom purpose in you. And the enemy has kind of just told you that you're going to live a life on the east side of the Jordan, that you're not good enough. Come on. You even, after I gave that message, you sat here and you're like, all these people are good enough for the west side of the Jordan, but I don't think I'm good enough. And I hear the Father say he's not a respecter of persons and that we're all his favorite in the kingdom. And that includes you. And so, Father, I thank you that the same God who met with you when you were in your bed as a child is the same God who wants to meet with you tonight. He wants to meet with you tomorrow. He wants to meet with you the next day. He wants to spend the rest of your life with you. He wants to sit by your bedside. That's just the Spirit of the Lord coming on you. He wants to sit by you, by your bedside. He wants to walk with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants to hold your hand. He wants to embrace you. He never wants to. In fact, I hear the Father say, look, when you weren't seeing me, I was still seeing you. When you weren't recognizing me, my eye was still upon you. You thought you wandered too far away from me, but behold, here I am. And so I take authority over a demon of discouragement, a demon that has told you that you're too bad for the kingdom. Come on. And I release the grace of the kingdom over you in the name of Jesus. And I release hope into you right now. I release the hope of the kingdom. Discouragement up and out. Up and out. Up and out. In Jesus' name. Tell me who your Savior is. My Savior is the Lord Jesus. There you go. Okay, so quick and easy. You ready? Okay, I need you to believe that God loves you. Say, God, you love me. God, you love me every inch of me. There you go. So, on the count of three, every demon is going to leave. Quick and easy. Quick and easy. You ready? On the count of three, you're going to breathe in, and you're going to blow it out. Nice and easy and simple. One, two, three. Breathe in. Breathe in. And blow it out. Easy. Go on. There you go. See? Blow it out. Blow it out. There you go. Nice and easy. Had a girl. No. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for you. Yes, thank God. Now I just want you to let the peace of God reside and abide in you. Rest. It's time for you to rest. Just like your sister came into the rest of the kingdom. Easy, Jesus. Thought I bumped into an angel again. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Can I just come pray with you? Is that cool? All right. Oh, there's, there's our light. Hey, so is there anything you want me to pray for specifically? Nope, you just want me to pray over you? Okay. Father, I thank you for Maggie. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that all the days of her life you have known her. I thank you, Father. Did you know that there's a verse in the Bible that says when you were in your mama's womb, that means in her belly, right? That he knit you together with his fingertips. Isn't that cool? Like while you were in your mom's womb, he knit you together with his fingertips. But here's also what that means. What that means, Maggie, is he didn't just pick out your eye color. He didn't just pick out your hair color. He didn't just pick out all the parts of you. He also picked up, pick, put together a future for you a very specific plan and a very specific path. We call that a lot of times the big word destiny. Have you ever heard of that word? Your destiny, that you have a destiny. 
And God wants you to know that he has a plan for you. And the enemy is not a part of it. You understand when I say the enemy, right? Fear, depression, discouragement, feeling anxious. Do you ever feel anxious sometimes, right? But God says that the anxieties of the world can have no part of you. Because when I put you together, when you were in your mama's room, all I had in mind for you was love, peace, and rest. So I'm going to take authority over the enemy and his anxiety, and he's been trying to steal what God put into you. So do you want to let that go tonight? Okay. So on the count of three, you're going to take a nice deep breath, and you're going to breathe in God's peace and his love. And then you're just going to blow out all that anxiety. You want to be done being anxious? Okay, cool. Easy. Ready? One, two, three. Breathe in. Blow out all that anxiety. Woo! Generational curse is broken. In Jesus' name. So if you would do me a favor and like kind of just for a minute, like let go of mom and just shake your hands out like this. There you go. Just feel that. See, it's easy. See how relaxed you feel? All that anxiety is gone. Awesome. It's easy, just like that. So repeat after me. God, you have a plan for me. May you say that, God, you have a plan for me. And it does not include anxiety. Yeah. I am filled with peace. I am filled with rest. And I am loved. That's it. You remember those all the days of your life. I am filled with peace. I am filled with rest. And I am loved. You say that all the days of your life, Maggie. Don't forget those words. And you're going to live your life in peace, rest, and love. Easy peasy. It wasn't too bad, was it? How you doing? Brittany's next. Are you going to go through deliverance? I don't I think I might. I don't want to. <laughs> cussing in the spirit. I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm not on the west side. I'm not on the west side yet. Clearly. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Where's our videoer? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hands out just like this. So, I mean, you know I did not send you that verse. Just to be like, oh, look, this is what the Lord is doing for me. Oh, I know. Right? So I feel like the Lord is like, share it with those you love. Like, I want them to go where you're going. I don't want to go on the west side of the Jordan without my team. I know. And so, Father, we thank you that if you invite us into it, you're going to see us through it. And so I thank you, Father, that even generational curses tonight are being broken. Things that have be become too hard to stop doing. I just speak the ease of the kingdom. The Bible says that the yoke of the Lord is easy and his burden is light. And so I speak the ease of being yoked to the Lord. And I cut you free from every generational curse that would keep you from coming into the ease of the west side of the Jordan. All the subtle impurities that we have compromised, I'll say we, that we have compromised in being cleansed because we don't want to miss out on the greater portions of the kingdom. And I hear the Father say he doesn't want to go without you. I mean, there's that verse in the Bible where Moses is like, I don't want to go without you. But it's like God is saying, but I don't want to go without you. Like where I'm going, I need Brittany to go with me. I want Brittany to go with me. So I take authority over that stubbornness. <laughs> take authority over that stubbornness. Yeah. Take authority over right now in Jesus' name. And I replenish it with a softness in the spirit because you can trust the Lord. You haven't been able to trust everybody in your life, but God, you can trust. He's never let you down. He's never forsaken you from the very beginning of time, from the time you first met him until this day, God has never left you. And so God, I thank you that she is a pliable vessel, vessel in the spirit. And so we're asking Holy Spirit that the places, just the little places that have become wooden or have become earthen, God, we're asking right now by your grace and your mercy that you would begin to inlay them with silver and gold. And that you would begin to purify all the impurifications in her mind, in her physical body, in your physical body. Thank you, Jesus. I take authority over all the spirits that would keep your blood sugar all wonky and wacky. 
We don't even know what you're called, but we don't like you because we know that God brings balance in the kingdom. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the invitation to partner with you for the perfect health and the wholeness that we would walk in the strength and the vigor and the energy of the kingdom. And, God, we speak against any affliction on her physical body that will keep her from coming into that health and wholeness of the kingdom. Every spirit of affliction, come on out. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to push you back just a minute. Sorry. Hey. You ready? Yeah. Are you ready? No? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're already giddy with the spirit. I walked in the room and I was like, it's hot. It is hot in here. The spirit is thick. Man, it feels great, doesn't it? You're like, whoo, I'm home. Yeah, hands out nice and big like this. Father, I thank you for my brother, Beto, and I thank you, Father. And the Lord's given this word a couple of times tonight, but he keeps reminding me that he's not just the alpha, but he's also the omega, which means everything that he starts, he completes. And you can be confident that he who began a good work in you will carry it out into completion. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you don't just start things, but you sustain things and you complete things. And God's presence has never left you. He's never forsaking you. We know this. We know the Bible says this. But God says that he wants you to become a greater carrier of his kingdom. <laughs> and he's reminding me of the parable of the sower who goes out and he looks at all these different kinds of so soil. And we know the Bible primarily teaches us about the different kinds of soil. But I want you to picture yourself as the sower for a moment. And God has given you a seed bag of all the truths and prophetic words and words of knowledge and um, words of healing and words of deliverance. And God is beginning to sharpen your discerning of spirits that you're able to look at where is the most fertile soil. Because the spirit of the Lord and the gifts of God are delicate and I don't want to throw them on fallow soil. And so I'm, I feel that the Lord tonight wants to just loose a discerning of spirits that you're able to discern what spirit has a crowded heart, what spirit has a shallow heart, what spirit is a fallow soil, and what spirit is the most nutritious soil. Because I want to preserve the words, and I want to preserve the presence, and I want to preserve the gifts of the Lord for the most fertile soil. And so you've been carrying this seed bag for a while, and you've been waiting on the Lord, and tonight God's going to loose that discerning of spirits. And he's going to release into you the ability to know, where do I sow my seed? And where do I not sow my seed? And so, Father, I thank you tonight that you're releasing that gift in him right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's a good word. I like to praise the Lord, confirm him. That was a good word. That was a good word. Oh, that was a good word. I was getting me some of that word. So I'll take some of that discerning of spirits. How many of you need discerning of spirits in the room? You need a little bit wiser about where you spend your time, who you talk to. And the Bible says don't engage with a fool. And some of us engage with a fool. We try and debate with people about truths, and they're blind. They're fools. You're wasting your breath. Don't throw your pearls before swine. Thank you, Jesus. Come on forward for me in just a moment. Okay, sorry. I'm you're so good. Wrecked. You're good. You're so wrecked. Is that you say you're no. so wrecked? Okay. Easy peasy. This is not about trusting me. It's not about trusting Brittany. It's really just about trusting the Lord with your life because your life has been in His hands all the days of your life. From the moment you were in your mother's womb, when you came out and you took your breath to this day, God's presence has never left you. He's been navigating you the entire time. In moments of discouragement, God has still been with you. In moments of disappointment, God has still been with you. In your greatest seasons of fear and anxiety, God has never left you. And the Bible says that it's God's perfect love that casts out fear. And fear isn't about getting rid of fear. It's not about getting rid of anxiety. It's not about getting rid of angst. That'll make us crazy trying to do that. Really, we attack fear by just coming into and agreeing with God's love and saying, God, I see myself the way you see me. It's about looking in the mirror and seeing the beauty, seeing the perfection of the blood. It's 
about seeing our worth. It's about seeing our value. And it's not about being arrogant. It's about seeing it the way God sees it and knowing that God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. God's hand has always been on you. So if you would just close your eyes for me, just pretend like nobody's here. It's just you and the Lord. That was your first step of trust. I'm not going to touch you, Lisa, but I do want you to put your hands up, and I want you to just let the Lord touch you whenever you're ready, and just let him touch you. There it is. The Bible talks about his love that is like a rushing river. It's a cascade that overflows us. And it's not because we've done all the right things. It's only because he loves us. And all you have to do, Lisa, for once in your life, you get to just stand here and do nothing. And just relax and receive his presence. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to say all the right things. You don't have to make all the right people happy. You don't have to perform well. You get to just stand here and let him do it. It's just the presence of, I'm not touching you. That's the spirit of the Lord coming on you. But now you're working harder against it than you are to just let him do it. You do it, God. You do it, God. So I'm going to come alongside and just quiet the mind and release the peace and the ease of the kingdom. No more kicking against the goads. There we go. I didn't touch her. That was important. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lisa, you'll never regret coming forward, but you would have regretted not coming forward. I know it. I know it in my knower. How are you? I am talking to you. <laughs> well, we're going to close it out with a song. And that way we started in unity. We end in unity. We saw lots of fun things tonight. Um, and so, God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you, Lord, for being a God who is great. I feel like the Spirit is pulling me towards you. <laughs> that was weird. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> I was like, woo -hoo. Uh, so we just honor you, Father, in this room. We thank you, Lord, that, look, 10 years from now, I, I don't care if you remember my name. I hope you don't. But I, rem I hope you remember what the Lord spoke to you tonight. And I hope you remember the encounter you have with the Spirit. Look, we can go to, like I, I tell my kids all the time when they encounter the Spirit, I was like, you can go to church service after church service, and 10 years from now, you might remember one or two of the messages. But what you'll never forget is when you have an encounter with the Holy Spirit because it marks you. It leaves a mark in your life that can never be erased. The enemy cannot erase it. No man can erase it. But remember, the first thing the devil's going to try and do is make you doubt it. When the, when the man was healed in the mat, he was still carrying his mat. When the Pharisees came up and said, who healed you on the Sabbath? Immediately brought a question of doubt. And so I speak to every mind in this room, and I say that doubt cannot have you. That there was an experience that each person had in here, and though you may never be able to explain it, you know that you know God spoke to me. I encountered the Lord, and he encountered me. So, Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Oh, we honor you. Oh, we honor you. Oh, we honor you. Oh, we give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We honor you, God. Yeah. Less of me and more of you. Less of me and more of you. Less of me and more of you, we give you glory.